What's up, ballers? Welcome to a quick guide on how to leech lost halls in the Marble Colossus. If you're watching this, you probably sit in US East Nexus joining random ass dungeons, and you've been in lost halls once or twice, but you died to a grotto slime and never went in again. Luckily, I've been leeching this dungeon for weeks now, and I'm here to help you land your first kill. In these clips, I'm playing on a 3 out of 8 ninja with max defense, life, and mana. I can't get any ninja stars to drop, but I don't know how to play ninja anyway, so it's okay. There are no minimum requirements to leech this dungeon, but I recommend farming 1 out of 8 in defense in the godlands. A knight would also be a great class to run here, assuming you're getting spammed with heals from other priests. The first thing you want to do regardless of character is head to the guild hall and type pots to receive 8 HP pots and mana pots. If you're not in a guild, you're going to want to join Park Strikers Discord in the description. No other guild's HP pots will hit quite the same. Through this method, you can carry at least 14 pots to spam during Marble Colossus. Now that you're in the dungeon, you'll notice 1-4 to four pillars in each direction. Almost anything can be on the other side of these pillars, so stand back and let these clowns feel it out. Before I get into the mobs, let's talk about your approach to every room. When the rest of the group is peeking a room, stay back and watch for enemies from behind. Assume some dweeb is going to peek every room on your screen, and crusaders are going to rush in and swarm the group like an episode of The Walking Dead. Visualize your escape route. This is the path to spawn that you already cleared. In no circumstance should you ever run into a room that hasn't been cleared yet. If you do, and it's a slime room, press Nexus. First, we have the Oryx room. You know you're near an Oryx room when this asshole comes rushing out throwing knives at you. Some raid leaders will refer to him as Mario. His purple projectiles inflict Confuse for 3 seconds. Inside the room, there are Oryx knights circling a stationary champion. When the knights lose a quarter of their health, they'll chase players out of the room. Be on the lookout for black projectiles. These can blend in with the hallways and deal a bunch of damage when you aren't paying attention. When each knight is dead, the champion activates and starts spraying projectiles. He usually gets stunned by knights, but emphasis on usually, because I've almost died before from forgetting this guy can attack and walking on top of him. Next room, golems. You know you're near a golem room when the big dude charges out and starts firing high damage arrows at you. When he hits half health, he'll run away like a little bitch. The red golems shoot fireballs that ignore defense. The gray golems fire some wavy shots, but above all, keep your eye on the black golems. These guys can petrify you for long enough to get clapped by the big golem. Do not underestimate the slime room. You know you're near one when you see rats and bats trailing out from the room. Bats inflict pet stasis, which doesn't matter since you're broke like me and your pet doesn't do shit anyway. And a little damage, I'm not gonna lie. Try not to walk through a bunch of these shots. The rats inflict quiet, which is annoying as hell if you're a knight trying to stun the blob or something. The blob in the center sprays out rotating, high damage shots that may trick you into believing you should rotate with them. Don't even go in the room, dumbass. When he takes damage, he'll split into smaller slimes that can corner you, not to mention whatever you might aggro from rooms that are off screen. Just stay outside until the room is cleared out. And here's the grotto slime. This thing has killed raid leaders in the goofiest ways time and time again. The small slimes fire a 130 damage machine gun that can blend in with the floor. Keep your distance from this guy in particular. He's even sketchier than the big slime. To this day, I let the ranged handle this. If somebody types C in chat, stop what you're doing and run. Preferably not in the direction of these guys. This is the Crusade. The Crusade aggro's from like one and a half rooms away, so it's the number one thing to get aggroed by some dweeb who strays away from the group. The combined DPS of the Crusade soldier, shipwright, and commander is ridiculous, so just let range DPS handle this. When the commander gets low, he'll spawn even more crusaders. The crusade explorers are usually the last to die, because they suck at chasing. Their torches inflict armor break. The other big callout is S. If you see S in chat, get ready to run back to spawn. Every man for their fucking self. This guy is very rare to see in a key, unless you see the haunted halls modifier which can add a 5-15% to 15 additional chance for each room to have a ghost. The Spectral Sentry will chase the nearest player and spam pet stasis, bleeding, and slowing shots. Above all, dodge the green slowing shots. But ideally, you shouldn't have to dodge him at all. 
You don't need to outrun the sentry. You just need to be faster than the slowest moron he's chasing. Every 15 seconds, he will teleport to the nearest player until he disappears after 45 seconds. One room before MBC, you have the Marble Defender. A true Marble Colossus Leech can just sit outside and avoid fighting the Defender. If you want to take it a step further, consider attacking him until the arrows force you out of the room, like so. You'll probably still get loot. Finally, we have the Marble Colossus, or MBC. He has 17 phases, but honestly nobody knows the name of any of them. Only two of them are really going to give you trouble when leeching. As you walk into the room, start looking for priests and lock them. This is a great leeching strategy for any dungeon, and you can do it when you first enter Lost Halls if you want. Try to set yourself up for success by standing relatively near a priest for occasional heals. Ideally multiple priests. In each corner of the room, a tower will spawn. This is the first way you can get insta-killed in this fight. Don't stand where the towers spawn. Even if the tower is destroyed, pretend it's going to spawn at any moment and clap you. I recommend to kill these towers if you're leeching, because the gamers are going to focus on the boss or his cores to push the fight along faster. MBC himself tends to fire a lot of shotguns and even paralyzing shots later in the fight. So stay max range from him. The best time to get damage in is when he's in the center of the room, doing an attack pattern that you can read. After he takes a little damage, MBC is going to start chasing. You can back up to the wall here and make sure there are plenty of players in between you and MBC. Then he'll retreat to the center, fire a couple of shots, and start spawning Marble Colossus rocks, or Pop Rocks. This is the second way you can get insta-killed in this fight. The Pop Rocks will flash, right before they explode on top of players. If one is chasing you, back up until somebody else sets it off. Soon after the first Pop Rocks, he spawns the first Spirals of Spikes. These spikes are the third way you can be insta-killed in this fight. Each one of these shots deals 300 damage, so never try to jump over the spike wall. You can easily take three shots, 900 damage, and pop before you know what happened. In this first Spiral attack, avoid the yellow shots. They could possibly paralyze you into the spike wall. The arrows are also super unfun to eat as they deal 250 damage. A recurring theme you're going to see here is that everything in the MBC fight fucking hurts. But if you keep in mind that the towers, spike walls, and pop rocks are the main ways to get insta-killed, you can at least increase your chances of pressing Nexus in time to escape and try again. When this ends, he'll rotate, not chase, and fire out purple confused shurikens. These shots confuse you for 2.5 seconds, so you want to avoid them over anything else right now. Next, he's going to shoot out rocks in all directions. These rocks only deal 80 damage, but they're quick and the damage adds up. They also silence. Focus on dodging the rocks. Stand still if you have to, as dodging the color wheels will come more naturally. Next, he'll start chasing again. Now he can fire paralyzing shots. Stay behind the group and keep watching out for those respawning towers. You'll see some foreshadowing of the annoying drive-by phase, with these rocks that drive by and fire a shit ton of colored shots. Here's a quick rundown of the colors. If you're in a raid discord, the raid leader is going to tell you to avoid white and orange shots. Ignore him. Psychopath advice. Those are shots that lower your DPS. Your number one priority should be dodging red and green shots. Red shots inflict curse, which will make you take more damage from everything on screen, and green shots slow you. Sometimes being slowed will help you dodge shots, but usually it just gets you pinned against a spike wall and killed. Dodge red and green. With that out of the way, the drive-by phase is starting. The rocks will travel closer to the walls and fire color wheels as they pass you. Your job is to get past them when there's a safe chance to do so, before they can pin you against a wall. Be a little pushed off of the wall to give yourself the option to back up if you need to. Four directions of movement is much better than three here. A corner is a terrible place to be for this phase. Be near the center of a wall, and if you can find the group for some heals, that's even better. MBC is invulnerable whenever he has at least one marble core active. You might hear these yellow cores referred to as keys or whatever. When you get used to the fight, it's a good idea to attack these to speed up the more difficult phases. But for now, don't kill yourself chasing a key. 
just keep in mind that your group might be following the core in the event that you need heals. Next, we have a preview of the infamous survival phase. Try to push up a little, because the spike wall is more dangerous the closer to the wall you are. Whenever you see these yellow macaroni and cheese shots, stop what you're doing and focus on dodging them. They are one of the only shots in Realm of the Mad God that inflict two status debuffs. When you get hit, you'll be paralyzed for three seconds and confused for four seconds. If the boss is near you when you take one of these shots, you'll probably be forced to Nexus. When you see this phase, survival is coming. Instead of attacking the boss, just clear some towers and mentally prepare yourself for some bullshit. Find the group and stack on them if you want any chance of winning. Being with the group will cause more pop rocks to chase you, with the trade-off of getting way more heals and buffs. Here's survival. Make sure you're in the same pizza slice as the group here. Stay maybe 75% away from the boss. You don't want to be up against the wall, because the spike wall will come in faster and pin you. And it's kind of obvious why you don't want to be close. Avoid the spike wall above all. Avoid the pop rocks that can still insta-kill you. Don't stand where any tower can respawn and one-shot you. Avoid his arrows. And then, apply the color wheel advice from earlier. Avoid green and red shots. Dodging everything on your screen would be ideal, but you're going to have to eat some shots realistically. Notice that the spike wall can change directions. Don't get caught off guard by this and run into the wall. Snap in the other direction and keep pushed up slightly. Don't forget the pop rocks exist. Holy shit. This phase is going to continue until all three keys are destroyed. You can help, but again, don't kill yourself trying. Use health pots generously in Nexus when you don't see a safe way to dodge. When the spike wall dissipates, you beat survival phase. Here, you can see what happens if you eat the macaroni and cheese from earlier. He'll say some shit about, I cannot fail my purpose, get all his HP back, and proceed to fail his purpose. Everything yellow on your screen can paralyze you. Then he's going to get voided, and so are the towers. Blue shots are way scarier, so keep your distance from the towers. Don't even worry about destroying them, let somebody else do that. Then he dies. Those shots hurt. And don't go into any woodland labyrinth portals after the fight. Fuck you, Obama.